Welcome to the Jerry Anderson podcast, which today examines the way we talk. No, not us. You. Were you on the radio this morning, uh, advertising Radio Ulster? Were you? Me? Yes. No. Do you do any kind of a trail? No. Do you? I never would be asked to trail. I know. I was just I was wondering. No. It must be somebody else they think. It says, why do Northern Irish people insist on in saying pine instead of pound? It's just the way we talk. Well, people in Belfast say that. We don't say, well, what we say pine? Pine. pine. No, what would I say? Okay, if I said you... To you said them, you said... You pulled me up a bit this the other day. Pine. Uh, you said that's the way I said. Pine. Pine. Well, pine. pine. No, I would say pine. No, but you would say sing. You don't have a, you don't have a, a plural. Pounds. Uh, if I said uh, you... I'd like, uh, I can't get around that. It's pounds. Of, uh, pounds. Uh, I can't do the pounds. If I said to you, how much is that? You'd say eight pine. A pound. Uh, so would you wouldn't say eight do. pounds. Although I, um, uh, I, 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 I'm a quid man. You're a quid man? I quid, but eight, eight quid. Pro tanto quid. Uh, I'd be more quid than pound. Quid, uh, quid has oh. died out. Aye, know. it's it like is. it's going the way of the far thing. Uh, I th- if I were you, I would stop saying quid because people it costs will... about four quid. Uh, no, 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 no. You're just saying quad. Quid. Quad. I'm not saying quad. You said quad. Yeah. I did not. Four you did. Quid. You did say four quad. I did not. That's like quads. Quiz, Q, I say. I don't say quiz. You do say quiz. I do not. You say quiz. I do not say quiz. You say quad. You say I do, uh, and do you know says, what you also say, say? You say milk. If, if I say... Um, I say quiz. And you say milk. Milk. I no, say you milk. Don't. No, you say milk. I say milk. You say milk. The presenter often worries about how he's been perceived by the listeners. Although not taking pains to ingratiate himself to any section of the audience, he is often hurt and wounded to discover that many people don't like him and some people can't stand him at all. I think I'm very... I think I'm very well, li- likable today, aren't I? Uh, yeah, you, aren't I? You're, you're you're different today. You're 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 semi clean. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that means not dirty. Yeah, if, you're not dirty and you're not clean. You're you're different. I'm kind of so, aye, soiled. Aye. No, semi soiled. Semi. semi. If, if I was a if I was an article in the shop, would you aye. take would, would you knock soiled. would you knock money off me? <laughs> <laughs> if somebody came in and said, "Oh, he's usually forty quid," what, what would you give What would you give me to them for? Ah, you see, fifteen. You see, ah, you see, uh, <laughs> Would you knock a fiver off me? I'll take a few bob off you. Uh. <laughs> Look, there's a wee bit of soil there. Look, I'll take a tenner off here. Give me thirty quid. And I'll, yeah, away you go. Take them with you. It's <laughs> not music. Uh, what? Excuse me. You're playing music? Why not? It's a music show. <laughs> <laughs> I do it every once in a while just to surprise people. Yeah. What makes a singer a singer? More than a voice is required. Underneath every tube with a microphone lies a story and a need unfulfilled. For any man to go up on stage and sing in front of people, it means that his ego is huge, right? And it means he loves himself. So singers... Oh, not necessarily so. Every one of them are the same. Are they? I have been in many bands, and uh, the drummers are psychopaths, mm-hmm. and the singers are egomaniacs, and all the rest of the guys are usually okay. And everybody... You avoid the singers and the drummers, and everybody else just hangs around together, and the singers and the drummers, they... The singer spends all their time trying to you know, ingratiate themselves to the people. The drummer just likes hitting things and drinking. Anyway, another singer in the middle of the song walked round the edge of the dance floor where people sat and held the microphone up to their mouths. Did you hear that? What? He did likewise to me and I was just about to impress him with my talent when all of a sudden he leaned over and screamed the words tunelessly into the microphone pretending it was me singing badly. He must have thought it was hilarious but he picked the wrong woman. Apparently it's a painful operation to have those things removed. As the fellow goes around and asks the people in the audience to sing. You've met him, haven't you? No. Oh, I've met him. Well, what does he do? He just goes around and he goes, he goes uh, do, give me a song that's horrible. Well, Franklin f- Rosie, get on board. No, give me a one everybody knows the words of. Uh, I left Sweet my... Caroline. Okay. Good times never... Oh, I over He's holding the mic over to you. Yeah, and you're going, right. the same so good. Ah. So there's sweet Caroline. Ba, 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 good times never be so good. You see? You see? And then they go, <laughs> that made me cough. No, I uh, like the one. I like the story that you, did you point it out to me about the singer on stage? Yes, I never realised. I always, I always thought. No, when we were in the dances, I'm talking about. Uh, let's talk show bands here. Go ahead. And you're up giving it. It's when the the lead singer is up singing away mm-hmm. and pointing down the hall. Yeah, there's nobody point, there. I always thought they was. I, I fell for it. That's called winking at the wall as well. 
Yeah. See what happens. Let me explain that. There's a, a day gone by. Is there, a man, these... is there a man on the phone? You're waiting for you. It's okay. Uh, but these are days gone by. But these are show business principles that apply. See, see show business principles never change because show business pe- people always know what works and they always know what doesn't work. And human nature never changes. See, you imagine, right? Let's say you're a star, okay? Right. Not a big star, but quite well known. If you were in a show band, you see, people would stand in front of the stage and look at you when you came on first. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want to be Roly Daniels, right? I'm, I'm Roly You're Roly Daniels, Daniels. Yeah, and you're playing Roly. in... Oh, where? I want to be... Um, and, and, and shorts. I mean it. No, I want to go in shorts and All right. Belfast. Where are your shorts? No, in shorts. Oh, oh club. in shorts. Uh, in the shorts club. Uh, All right. Okay, no, but you see, that's... All right, then. Well, well, okay, right, no. No, no, no. I'll go somewhere else. I can go to the riverside to see... Stay in shorts. Stay in shorts. Okay, right. Rolly Daniel comes on the stage, right? right? People who are sitting in shorts are men with their wives. Right. Right? And sometimes their wives are... Maybe jars, you know, kind of thing. Right. And men going out with their wives sometimes end up getting on too well with them. You don't know. You don't know what's going on. So the last thing he wants is a man to come out. A big, shiny man. A big, clean man. Not yes. like me. A man who'd be good looking, a man who's singing. The first thing he does is winks down at his wife. Right. And he's going, who the book does he oh. think he is? That's what you get, you see. So when a man comes out to sing in front of an audience, the first of all, he starts to wink and say hello to people. But he's not saying hello to people because he doesn't know any of them and he doesn't know who to say hello to because they may not be friendly. So he winks at the wall and he says hello to the wall. Hello, hi. And points at the wall. So he doesn't point at anybody because if he points at anybody, particularly, he may be pointing at the wrong guy. Maybe a paramilitary or something. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right, yeah. He's along with his wife and her skirts fell down a wee bit. Do you know what I mean? Right. You know what he's got? Yeah, yeah. Right. Anyway, what do we start talking about? There's a man about? on one. I'm not finished yet. Right. Hold on, but I can't remember what I was talking about even. Though, but all I do remember is that I wasn't finished. Our Peace Bridge is a wonderful thing, but just being Stroke City, many people are upset at various aspects of this great and wonderful facility. As bridges go, it has no peer. No pun intended. I actually complained to a former mayor of this city last night who was out having a drink, out socialising, and we were talking. He says, have you seen, been on the bridge? I says, yes, it's a pity about the dogs. Can you not do something about the dogs? Says, a man, a, an ex-mayor is having a drink? Yes. And you complained to him yes. about dogs? And I'm sure he was glad to see you coming. <laughs> what did he say? Go on, reenact the conversation. Now, I'm the mayor. Right. Uh, and Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm having a drink. <laughs> Jesus Christ, stuff there. You know, I pay that. <sighs> yeah, I must go for a fag. I don't think he uh, smokes. I can't spin a man. I know. I'm I not know. being an A mayor. I particular. Know. Uh, 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 it's great to not be a mayor. Uh, when you're a mayor, you run around doing everything. It's great to be able to do nothing. Just sit here and. I don't know. There's a boy coming. No, I come in and he had a very big hello for me. Hello! Big as that, Sean. Aye. And I says, How's it going, Sean? Uh, I says, Great, former mayor. Thank you. Uh, what about you? What I'm about that big, young I'm lad up in Radio Foil? How's he getting on? Uh, young oh, Anderson's uh, lad. No, he called you, he um, called you No Chin. The mayor called me No Chin. Former mayor. The former mayor. A called... form, no, a former mayor. <laughs> not the <laughs> former mayor. In other words, not the last one. No. Well, uh, no Chin. Yeah. But see, this is this is against nature because I have a, quite a prominent chin. I know. Well, why does he think I have no chin? Well, I just said. Oh, oh, I see. I see. He's going the other way. Maybe. So how's I no chin? Doing so what did you days? say? I said he's fine. I said, is he with you tonight? Where is he that right? I know that. You see. Where is he that right? So many people ask that. Where is he that right? <laughs> Where is it? I don't know. You know where is it? They never ask me where you are. Do they not? Never. Oh, that's hateful. They always ask me, and when I go on holidays, they, ask, they always ask me where you are. Oh, there you are. And I always say, I always say the same thing. What? Go away. Oh, I always say to them. So what did you say to him then? Well, uh, Mr. Ex-Mayor from way back, um, not I have something to say to you about the dogs no, on no, the peace No, no, he said to me, have you been over the new bridge yet? Let me say that. Have you been over the new bridge yet? <laughs> Our new peace bridge, which will bring all people together and make people love one another the way they should always have done, but had no sense. And I said, yes, I was over uh, last night. Well, I'm so glad that you had the opportunity to traverse our bridge. And what do you think of the transpontine scenery whilst you were over there? Did you meet many Protestant people? And aren't they just the same as us? 
And I says, it was wonderful, but it's a pity about the dogs. He says, we're inundated with complaints. He said? Mm. I am inundated with complaints about dogs on our peace bridge, fouling the footpath where ordinary people have to walk. But what I was saying to myself is this, how come in other parts of the world there are little boxes where you can get your little piece of paper and tick your dog shite and put it into them boxes, and then boys collect it later. Why can we not do that like normal civilized people? Well, he didn't. He didn't say that. But what he, uh, what he, what I said. Um, he said. I'd like to thank you for electing me to this prestigious post. I shall do whatever I can to bring the two portions of our population together and promote peace and harmony from now until I have to stop. He said. He says I never thought about the dogs. He says, but sure, what's the answer? I never thought about the dogs, but as I often said to my wife, what's the answer? And then I, t- I said to him, what is the answer, Sean? Says, Ban the dogs. And he nearly fell off his stool. Ah, Ban what, the dogs? That's what he said. Ban the dogs? And, I, and then he says, jeepers, I never thought about that. Jeepers, I never thought of that. Controversy rages behind the scenes in the programme about the presenter's insistence on holding back stories concerning his famous friends. He has reached the stage where he is now repeating for the third time some of the stories he has already told. But there are big ones in the breach. Why will he not pull the trigger and tell the people these new stories? Sean, ask Jerry to tell his Elvis story. I'm intrigued to hear it. Go on. Well, uh, if he was intrigued to hear, he will know that he will never hear that story until such time as I find someone suitable to tell it to. See, there's no one around that I regard as being, well, I worldly. suppose, worldly, worldly enough. Mm-hmm. Remember I said I had high hopes for Ryan Turbody, mm-hmm. but now I realise he's just a little lawyer like the rest of them. And he's going to radio too, which means you'll never hear of him again. He'll become like Ken Bruce and play golf, and then he'll become like you. Then he'll become like Terry Wogan. No, he won't. He's not smart enough. No, I thought I would tell it to him because I was going to tell him. Why did you tell it to Wogan? Because he never asked me. He never asked you. No, he didn't have a show then. I could have told him. You had a show when you have, which you still have, incidentally. Uh Uh, And Terry Wogan sat in there opposite you and you interviewed him. Yes. Why didn't you say, by the way, Terry, just before you go. Did you ever meet Elvis, Terry? Did, aye, did you ever hear That would have been Elvis the way in, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it Terry, have you ever met Elvis? Yeah. I'm sure he did at one stage of his career, but then again, probably not. Wouldn't it have been great if he had said no? Mm. Terry, let me do that. Can you do Terry Wogan? No, not really. It's a shame. Yeah. Okay, uh, Terry, uh, have you ever met... Uh, I don't know why I'm asking you this. It's just a little thing in the back of my mind. Have you ever met Elvis? Who, uh, is it me? Yeah, yeah, just say no. No, no, no. no have you not? I would have no, thought you would no, have. You've no, met no, most people. You've met no. Ringo Starr. As a matter of fact, we were talking about Ringo Starr right. the other day. That's right. I'm surprised you never met Elvis. You've met most of the Beatles, I'm well, sure. I, I have, have indeed. Have, have you met uh, Elvis, Jerry? <laughs> I don't know who that is. No, but I'm just, I'm just trying to go up and down that inflection that he has. No way he goes up. And he goes down, and he yeah. He always starts at the, at the I, top and goes down. The yeah, that's bottom, right, like yeah. that. Have I can't you do. You ever met him yourself? That's you just know. that's just gay bar. Ah, but some somewhat down there. No, that's it? just standard gay burn. Don't be yeah. putting gay burn. Gay burn. Terry doesn't like gay burn. Does he not? I don't think he does. You don't know. You just made that up. No, I have a feeling that he does. You don't know. I have a reason for thinking that, but I have All a feeling right. that he couldn't be bothered with him. Because Gable's a little fussy, isn't he? Mm. Anyway, if Logan's not like that, he's very laid back and, and kind of smart, which is what nearly everybody isn't. And uh, speaking of which, uh, a gentleman sends me a clip. Where, where, is, where is this going? <laughs> the, it's going that I can't tell you the Elvis story until I find a man that is worthy of telling it to. Oh, and right. you might say to yourself, why don't you tell it to me? Go and ask your way. Why don't you it. tell it to me? Because it's not the same. When I'm invited on to, what could I be invited? Oh, John Humphreys? I would tell it to Graham Norton. Would you? I like I always liked Graham Norton. I knew Graham Norton before he was Graham Norton, you know. Did you know that? No. I Who met Graham he? Norton about 10 years ago. Well, he was Graham Norton. Yeah, yeah. But he wasn't the Graham Norton that you know now. He wasn't that... <laughs> he wasn't that Graham Norton. He was a... Hello, hi, Graham Norton. What's your name? My name's Anderson. Oh, hello, hi. How's it going? Do you like a drink? Oh, great, yeah. How's it going? You know, that kind of Graham Norton. Yeah. None of this... <laughs> None of that. See, that's all affected. That's what's called showbiz. And then he learned how to do that, and then he became famous. But I liked him. Graham Norton's a very smart guy. No, I don't, why wouldn't I like you telling it to him? Oh, not on TV. No, he's not a very smart no. guy. He comes no. across as an idiot. But yeah. that's what you do. Could be popular. That's what I said to you before. We talked about this the other day. You have to know what to do to be popular and have the stomach to do it. Would you and tell it to Des O'Connor? No. 
No, I would I would tell the Graham Norton. I wouldn't tell the Johnson Ross. I don't like Johnson Ross. And I wouldn't tell the Ken Bruce. I don't like him either. Thank you for listening. I'd like to thank the committee for letting me use the microphone and Mrs. Doherty for making the sandwiches.